Hello, dark readers, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. This is a live stream, so if you're watching or listening over on our podcast app, then uh, this is a little late, I guess. So today we're doing something a little different. We're doing tarot cards, <laughs> tarot card releases. It's going to be so exciting. Yes, Carrie's pointing at her awesome Buffy tarot card. So we've divided this up into two different sections. This is part one of part two, or part one of two. Uh, we're going through January through June, I think, right now, and then yes. June to December. And I'm sure we'll be adding more later on as more December stuff comes up because the holidays. So, Carrie, why don't you show us what your first tarot card deck is? Because I'm very excited. All right. We're going to put it on screen for those of you that are watching us on video. It is the Anne Stokes Gothic Oracle. I'm very excited about this one. Stephen Bright is the author, Ann Stokes is the illustrator. It came out January 20. I managed to control myself and not buy it yet. And Ann Stokes tends to have like warriors and dragon wings and fairies, very fantasy. Lots of uh, unicorns, which is not really my thing, but I love the costuming on the cards and I'm interested to do a couple readings with it. There's an owl messenger and a phoenix rising so it's not a standard tarot deck there's a card called the truth so they kind of deviate from the major arcana a little bit but it's okay because it's fantasy and it's beautiful and there's a stunning mermaid on a card called hidden depths so if you're kind of bored of the regular old tarot and you want to start telling new stories or learning new wisdom this would be a good way to go about it it's the anne stokes gothic oracle and it came out january 20. I actually do have this. So here's the little box cover. So oh. the wings are holographic and shiny. The book itself has red shiny foil on it too. Gorgeous. And here's a few of the cards just so you get a little, whoops, this one's my favorite. He's so cute. A little Halloween it's dragon. Trick or treat. <laughs> I love him. But yes, very fun deck. It's I very didn't fun. know you had this. Ooh. I do. All right. So I my next deck, which I don't think either of us have, this one's called Ethereal Visions Tarot Luna Edition. This came out January 4th. This is by Matt Hughes. And it's an Art Nouveau inspired deck. I love Here, I'm, it. I'm surprised you don't have this one, actually. I didn't know about it till we did the research. And this just looks like an Alphonse Mucha card with a lady with flowers in her hair and her gown. But she's covered up because I'm a bit of a prude and I don't like to have <laughs> boobies everywhere in my house. <laughs> boobies oh. belong in the bedroom. Okay, oh, sorry. so funny. BB. This uh, is stunning. It is. This is a very stunning deck. And you. I think you actually wrapped this up perfectly. It is definitely an Alphonse Mucha inspired every I mean it looks exactly like it it almost looks like I don't know if this is just the Amazon images but it does seem like some of the cards look a little holographic too which would be Ooh. amazing because there is some little rainbow shine in some of these cards lots I mean lots of diversity in these cards as well that's something that I really enjoy so this ha has a 140 page book that comes with it as well it has all of our major and minor arcanas. It's an 80 card deck. Oh. Yes. Oh. What are the two bonus cards, I wonder. So it actually does say the Luna Edition revised artwork has iridescent silver foil stamping. So I'm not wrong here. Mm -hmm. So all of the cards have a beautiful shine to them. Oh, wow. Did that make it more expensive? I. It's only 24 dollars oh, right now normal. yeah so it's beautiful i highly recommend this one it's very stunning this is ethereal visions tarot the luna edition by matt hughes my next deck is tarot of the owls art by elizabeth alba the author is pamela chen i'm not a person that's into owls although i have to point out that there are owls that live next to my house in a big tree and I hear them all night, and they possibly killed my outdoor cat, but <clears throat> that's why we don't have outdoor cats. Oh. But this is Tarot of the Owls, and they encourage you to spread your wings and fly into the realm of mystical owls. Unlock your intuition with wisdom from owls of all shapes and sizes. It's a Rider Waite Smith based deck, and it's by Llewellyn Publications, and it came out in January. I also have this one. I'm so sorry. I have all of the things. <laughs> 
It has a, a huge, just an add on here. It does have a massive uh, guidebook here with full page photos for oh, every cool. single one. And I love the cards, the back. It's rainbow feathering with an eyeball, like an owl eye in the center. It's that, really cool. That looks like an Inside Editions deck, the way the ribbon hangs out there. And there's a, wow. Yeah, right? No, it, it is Llewellyn. Like Llewellyn. Wow, yep. nice. The deck is really cool, really fun. I think the owls are also kind of um, like the swords suit tends to be wintry themed. And then we our cups is all beachy theme so it's kind of it's a really cool deck i really like it anyway sorry <laughs> i have all Don't these decks <laughs> shopaholic alert right. hey, no judgment right. oh we have I'll somebody watching us over on facebook welcome to dark side of the library we're talking about the tarot decks coming out in 2023 yes and another one i have the next one is witch's moon magic oracle cards Whoa. one comes out january 8th this is by flavia kate peters and barbara michael john free so something i really enjoy about this deck is that uh, i haven't seen this very much but the edges of this deck are silver and Ooh. i love it i wish they had more decks that had the silver foil on the side it's just so really elegant stunning. Very beautiful. This is a uh, 48 cards, gilded cards, sorry, full of celestial oh. power. Um, so all of these are moon associations. So all of the cards have moon something. So we have like water, moon, magic, waxing, uh, crescent, moon, magic, all very, very moon oriented. This is a fun deck with lots of cool characters and illustrations. I think a lot of it is mixed media too. It almost has like a portrait look with all this magical whimsy surrounding them and the moon. It's really cool. So not only that, this deck and the book incorporate witchcraft to see, to help you see what the moon cycles and phases mean for you every single day. So, so what 30 cards are missing? Why is it 48 instead of 78? You know, oh, well, I'm not sure because it's, you know, I'm not really sure. It's an Oracle deck, so I'm not sure why. Oh, it's, uh, okay, it's not tarot. You're right. Yeah, yeah. My bad. No, you're fine. So it's a, it's a decent question. So this is a very cool deck if you are really into moon magic or are associate just like celestial bodies. I think it's really cool. So this is Witch's Moon Magic Oracle. This is uh, by Flavia Kate Peters and Barbara Michael John Free. My next deck is a Crystal Oracle, Fairy Gems. Oh. It's by Ellen Stibert, but the art is by Linda Ravenscroft. And for years, I've had Linda Ravenscroft fairy and gothic calendars on my wall. She often draws little elf ears on her fairies, and they have <sighs> iridescent gossamer wings. I am a huge fan, and I can't believe I didn't buy this yet. Yeah. It's an oracle deck. Uh, she mentions that fairies are spun of light and shadow, and they're mysterious beings. They're timeless nature spirits. And gemstones they're pulling this into this particular deck, have always held the promise of magic. Gemstones have been used as amulets and talismans. And we call on them to protect or heal or grant clairvo excuse me, clairvoyance and prophecy and travel into other realms. So this is a 40-card oracle deck where the power of fairies and gems comes together. Ooh. And I'm not really a gem person, but I am a fairy person and a Liv Linda Ravenscroft fan. So I'm probably going to grab this. Oh, no, that's awesome. I remember actually now when you said Linda Ravenscroft, I was like, wait a minute. You had, Ra or, yeah, Linda Ravenscroft everywhere, I remember growing up. Mm -hmm. So my next deck is for dragon lovers. Instead, this is called For the Love of Dragons. This came out February 9th. It's by Angie Solens and our wonderful Amy Brown is the illustrator. So another just icon in the fantasy illustration community i had this... so much stationery by her because it always had <laughs> fairies and dragons yes so this is a 44 card oracle deck and we have cute tiny little dragons cute wild free spirits surrounding our awesome fairies our classic amy brown fairies uh they're all allies to those who hold fairies and fables dear because of their voracious appetites, they have tasted many truths, imbibed much wisdom, 
and learned a thing or two about navigating the skies of change. This is so cute. They also recognize their own. So dragon lover with dragon lover, or fairy lover, super cute. Though you may not be able to de detect them at yet, you also have wings, the fairy people, and us fairy people. Your psyche is equipped to soar through your own adventures beyond your wildest imaginings and into the realm where impossible things happen every day. Discover the power of fire and flight in this collector deck and book set. This is really cool. I love the cover uh, and you can see that over on our YouTube channel. It is stunning. This is called For the Love of Dragons. This is by Angie Solens and our wonderful illustrator, Amy Brown. My next deck is the Magic Tarot. <laughs> This is so it cute. came out February 8th. It's by Amaya Arizola. We're going to explore the empowering and inclusive world of the Magic Tarot. They're fun and funky cards. It's a Raider uh, Waitsmith deck, but in a contemporary light. They have both Spanish and English card titles. Ooh. And it's very colorful with lots of purple and lime green and citron. And I see animals. I see a fox called El Loco. <laughs> and there's some sheep depicting no oh, monkeys depicting the lovers excuse me i don't want to have any sheep love issues going on right now <laughs> it's a very unique art style i definitely don't have anything like this and i love that it's a multilingual deck the publisher is llewellyn publications the author is amaya arizola it's the magic tarot all right my next deck, I have this one. It is the Oracle of the Wilder Ones, Messages and Affirmations from the Wilderness. It came out February 8th. <laughs> this is by Sharon McLloyd. So I originally was kind of like, I don't know about the art style. It's not really like I like it, but I was like, this isn't necessarily me. But this deck has grown on me so much. I've used it actually many, many times since I've is received the artist it. artist Paulina? It looks like an artist they used to collect in the 90s. It does, actually. No, I, mean, I think Sharon uh, McLeod does the illustrations oh, okay. as well. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing a separate illustrator here. Okay. So, sh And one thing that's really fun about this deck is that we have a very, very small book here. And they give you symbols in every single card. So, and I'm saying this not the best here. So we have here, this is a cute little carriage with a horse and a person on it. So what the guidebook does is that it makes you analyze the card. So this isn't necessarily giving you the answers necessarily. It's making I you love critically that. think. That's great. Yes. So it's like if a person is walking or if they're standing still in the image that you pull, It'll give you a different reading. And there's many different things in here, like color, shapes, uh, actual animals or objects. And every single one has different meanings. And you wrap them all up and create your own association. There is a small little thing on the bottom of each of these cards that kind of give you just a little more insight. So, for instance, I'm, I'm drawing one with a witch in a cute little mushroom field, and you can only see her back, and she's sitting there enjoying herself. It says, the work is done. It's time for rest. I release oh. the seeds and trust the spring to come. I How love cute. It. Yes. And then you get extra reading as you go through this guidebook and kind of just analyze the card. I like these for single pulls, like just a day to day, you know, what should I learn today? What kind of messages do I need to receive? So that's how I use this deck. And it's really fun. The images are beautiful, bright, vibrant, very fairy and witchy. This is the Oracle of the Wilder Ones, Messages and Affirmations from the Wilderness. <laughs> this is by Sharon McLeod. Oh, I meant to mention, if you're listening on the podcast, that's great. But we also are starting to do video podcasts now. You can watch them on our Dark Side of the Library YouTube channel and on Facebook. And over on our Instagram at Dark Side of the Library, we post reels flipping through beautiful dark art books or kids' books, children's books. And we talk about the books we're currently reading, such as I finally started reading Stone Blind about Medusa. I'm halfway through. I love the writing style, etc. We also wanted to mention our Amazon storefront where we curate dark books and we have live shopping streams where we do exactly what we're doing now. We just show you cool stuff coming out for those of us with a darker sensibility. Woo. Uh, that is amazon.com slash live slash dark side of the library. And we don't go live every day. It takes a lot of work. 
It does. <laughs> so you'll so see us a lot during Halloween, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so next, Katie is going to tell us about two decks that came out in March 2023. Oh, Go yeah. Ahead. I'm really thank you so much, Carrie. That uh, so this next one is really cool. I'm really excited just to see it and dive into it and learn more. Honestly, this is the African Gods Oracle, matching and spells of the Orishas. There's 36 gilded cards and 128 guidebook, full color as well. Nice, nice. I love these guys are giving us full illustrations now, like full color illustrations. It all used to just be black and white. And now we're getting all this color in our guidebooks. It's and even awesome. if it makes the guidebook cost four or five more dollars, it's worth it. I will pay the money. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So this is really cool. You get to learn about the Orishas and get guidance and spells. These cards are very bright. And I'm sure you can see that over on our YouTube channel, our live stream. Very just stunning artwork for real. It, it's it's really gorgeous. So um, what it says is, what if you could control what the reality around you returns by controlling the energies you sent to the universe in actions, words, and thoughts? What if you could become the creator of your own happiness, changing the reality around you, and achieving your dreams with the power of African gods and goddesses? Through, Afri through African magical traditions and its resemblance to Latin America, the Orisha's spirituality and the lessons of the Otis are part of a growing daily process in which magic happens when we start to assume self-responsibility for our choices in life. I'm, I'm already loving this. Once we understand that what happens to us in the present is a consequence of our past choices or lack of the choice. Uh, we begin to connect with the holy source of all happiness and joy, becoming conscious and able to create life we dream about. This is really cool. So you learn about rituals and meditation specifically from this African God's Oracle deck. It's a self-transformation tool from which you can ask the Orishas about the goals and anguishes of your life and get the Otis and Answers that will lead you to success. This sounds Do they fun. have like 10 hours for me? <laughs> I know, right? There's a I lot have going so on. exactly. <laughs> Please put something in order for me. <laughs> uh, this is the African God's Oracle. It is really beautiful. I'm really excited about it. And then our next tarot card deck, which I did get because I have Oops. no self control whatsoever. Is the Buffy the Vampire Slayer deck? Which <laughs> I, I think I have the wrong picture on screen, so we'll just go with it. Okay, <laughs> so here it is, close up. Um, it is stunning, and I'm sorry my camera is washing out the vibrancy of this. There's lots of bright neon purple and pink. Yes, Carrie's is a lot more accurate. It is so good. So we both I have got not this. read with this yet. Have you? I did one very simple reading, and it's fun. So we have all of oh. our great. It's so pretty. It is. So this is Inside Editions, which they are known for having full page photos for your major arcana, which is excellent. And then our minor arcana has smaller photos. Oh. See, I love the back of these cards. I think the design is so fun with this particular deck. And I love Buffy, so this is just like, oh, so exciting. At the back of our uh, guidebook, we also get a different um, Inside Editions is great at giving you spreads that associate with the actual show or movie or whatever pop culture reference it is. Justice! So, oh, curious. Get ready to laugh. Of course, the hangman <laughs> is Spike. Oh, I love it. I know. And of so, course, Justice is Angel. I know. Here's our <laughs> full card. I got to show you guys death. Yes. Oh, it's so good. And here's a card I always get sent to me by the universe. They always make me pull temperance. Really? Wow. Okay. That's, I mean, something cool. I guess we can't good. show all the cards. We want to leave some surprises for you guys. Yes. 
This is a really great deck, and it showcases our favorite characters. There's even some scenes, like in the Minor Ar Arcana. There are scenes in here. I couldn't tell you what episode, but there's things in there where I'm like, oh, I remember. So the Buffy the Vampire Slayer deck is amazing. Beautiful design. So much fun. This would make a great gift for anybody as well. And come check it out on our YouTube channel. You'll see a total, like a, a complete look through of these uh deck this deck all right carrie i'll let you talk now it's your turn <laughs> that's why i talked plenty when i was pulling out the cards and getting excited yes next is the crystal ball pocket oracle it's brace yourself it's a 13 card deck huh oh cute okay. it has nature inspired artwork Oh. And it comes with a deck, and this is meant to be a divination tool that features a mystical image on each card with very straightforward answers to your questions. Simply pose a question, gently shuffle the deck as you hold the question in your mind and possibly your heart, and when you feel like you've shuffled enough, draw a single card to reveal your answer. Oh the artist is Athene Noctua. The publisher is Hay House, and I think my life is so complicated, I need more than one uh, 13 options <laughs> for yeah. answers so this might not work for me but uh the natural artwork is so cute and there's little critters and there's a washed up skull of a otter or so i don't know what's going on here uh, <laughs> it is definitely beautiful i think i'm gonna pass on this one because i need more options agreed what's your I next like so this one actually isn't available anymore on Amazon, but hopefully if you wanted to add it to a list, you can. It's called Folklore Tarot. The cover is beautiful. I wish we can see the actual cards themselves. Hopefully they're very similar to the cover itself. It's uh, kind of this purple hue, a uh, black background, uh, very folklore. Is that uh, an owl? It kind of looks or a bat. like. No. It's, I think it's an owl. It's an owl, definitely. Okay. <laughs> so um, here it says this tarot presents deep universal truths about the nature of our world, though originating from diverse cultures, the stories of myth and legend share common themes, pathways and archetypes, which are woven into powerful sy symbols of tarot. This deck bridges the gap between the past and present, bringing the wisdom of the ancient beings to guide us on our current journey. Every pip card is illustrated i don't know what a pip card is uh with intricate floral elements Ooh. while the court cards and major arcana feature characters from world mythology okay i see what they've done there that's cool so this is by rowan orton's and i really hope this come like i hope we get more maybe this one's just being pushed back further and so it might be at barnes and noble they carry tarot also Ooh. I didn't even think about that. That'd be amazing. So this is Folklore Tarot, and it comes out, or it came out March 31st. My next card is Midnight Magic, a tarot deck of mushrooms. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, Sarah Richard is so good. <laughs> it is by Sarah Richard, as Kaylee, Katie did a spoiler alert. No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark, dreamy illustrations of the beautiful fungi of the forest. It is a rider weight base deck 78 cards symbolism uh there's chicken of the woods is the fool <laughs> <laughs> and fly agaric is the emperor etc oh. and the amazon preview actually lets us see about 10 of the cards Ooh. so there's a certain mushroom called king bolet or boliti i don't know what it's called and that's the king of pentacles chicken of the woods is the fool as they mentioned the high priestess which i sometimes get is the fairy ring champignon Ooh. a giant mushroom some of these are toxic some of these are psychedelic some are not the eight of wands is red coral so this is a very intriguing deck it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with psychedelia but if you indulge you're definitely going to want to grab this as well the publisher is adams media and it came out march 28. all right this uh oracle i don't know if you're calling me out carry but it says she's sirens oracle it's a 42 card deck and guidebook this ca comes out march 21st is by lisa lister it says it's stop it's time to stop apologizing for who you are 
I say sorry all the time for everything. So this is perfect. I think a lot of us get in the habit of apologizing just for, you know, silly things that, you know, we don't need to apologize for. Um, So we can unleash power, love and freedom with this deck, which is cool. Throughout time, the term sirens has been used to describe women who are dangerous. With this beautiful new oracle, uh, Lisa Lister shows you a different perspective. You'll discover that sirens actually hold the key to the feminine aspects of empowerment, confidence, and so much more. Wild, free, embodied, cyclical, all-knowing, they are way showers for insight, wonder, and revealment. Each card channeled and illustrated by Lisa is designed to support you as you remember, reclaim, and have fierce reverence for the beautiful, messy, complex, glorious siren that you are. Ooh, allow yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, allow the she sirens to sing songs of encouragement as you navigate the terrain of your own wild and unapologetic shores. This art style is really interesting, and you'll see bits of it on our YouTube channel. Uh, very unique, and they all feature different image images of beautiful women. And I, I don't want to. Maybe it's pop culture. It's a little pop culturey to me. So and very the, diverse. I see a whole bunch of skin tones. Yeah. Oh, it is very diverse. Very beautiful. Some fun, cool cards, and a really beautiful paint painted style. So this is She Sirens Oracle, a forty-two card deck and guidebook by Lisa Lister. My next deck is very weird. I do not know what Squid Cake Marseille Tarot is. I Is Squid Cake a comic? Is it a graphic novel? I don't know. It's very pink and creamy. Uh, the, the publisher, Rockpool Publishing, says tarot doesn't always have to be so serious. It can be lighthearted as well. So this Squid Cake Marseille Tarot has 78 gilded cards. I hope it's hot pink on the edge. 184-page guidebook. It's filled with snails, cakes, <laughs> fly traps, octopus. It's a modern, colorful twist on the traditional tarot Marseille. There's knights riding creatures, quirky faces. Uh, it's very trippy. The chariot is pulled by two snails instead of horses. And the hierophant is giving advice to two pink birds rather than people. It's a very creative deck. I'm going to have to grab it, although I might not use it in practice <laughs> to get advice. The High Priestess looks like me. It's a dorky girl sitting on a chair with a book and skin knees, and she has long <laughs> orange hair. I feel you. She was probably meant to be me. But I also noticed that on the card, below the image of the High Priestess, is keywords, awareness, secretiveness, and study, and then function, sits, which is true. The High Priestess sits on a throne. Oh. The next card is the Ace of Batons, and it has keywords, drive, new growth, creative spark. It doesn't have a function. Hmm. And the Magician looks like a zombie, frankly, but he's not. He's just a dude sitting there looking all green. The keywords are trickster, calculating, cunning, innovative, and the function is tricks. <laughs> so this is about the most bizarre tarot deck I've ever seen. It's by Jessica Roller, and it's Squid Cake Marseille Tarot, and it came out March 1st. <laughs> It's so dorky. I love it. All right. My next deck is very opposite. It's very elegant and dark. And it looks like all of these cards are gilded in gold or adorned. And it's got sacred geometry on it. It's Talisman Oracle. It is. Uh, it came out March 26th. This is by Nora Pax Pascalva. I think I said that wrong. I, I'm sorry. This sorry, one's... Nora. <laughs> this is very, very beautiful. Like I said, uh, the sacred geometry is kind of hanging out in the background of every single card or surrounding an image, whether that be like a tree, an insect, etc. Is that a bee cover? Katie loves bees. I do love bees and it is a bee. I love bees. So one thing too about this card uh, or this card, I'm looking at a card. Uh, we have... It's an oracle deck. So we have at the very, very bottom of each image, 
um, a title. So like one of the photos that is supplied by Amazon is like a beetle with its wings out with the sacred geometry around it, but it says good fortune on the bottom. And I like having tiny little blurbs on the bottom just so that if you are doing a continuous read, it helps you kind of get your gears turning a little bit so you can just keep going and going and going. So there are 44 black gilded edge cards. Okay. So it's gilded edge. Um, there is a packet of 44 sheets of vellum tracing paper and an illustrated 112 page guidebook. It is packaged in a matte laminate foil accented box. Fancy. This It's very fancy. So this, whole deck can be used in two ways uh as an oracle deck with powering uh, empowering messages and there's a hands-on kit to craft your own talisman for manifesting desired outcomes in your life that's cool so you as the reader have the power and the magic within you and you can place it on your um your own vellum tracing paper it's very wow. very cool so this is the talisman oracle this is by nora Paxca Bella. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's next for you, Carrie? Let's find out. The Tarot of Tales, which is a gorgeous black and purple deck. It's folktale inspired. <gasps> 78 cards, 176 page illustrated book by Melinda Lee Holm, illustrated by Rohan Daniel Eason. So folktales have brought us invaluable lessons on life for thousands of years. Melinda and illust the illustrator invite you into their magical world of art and prose where your readings become, wait for it, personalized fairy tales told by, told by the cards in narrative form. Oh my God. So the meaning of each card can be told in five different ways. One for each of five possible positions given in the accompanying full color guidebook. Lay out the cards, find the corresponding card for the passage and link them together to read the tale told to you by the tarot. I love this. Wow. Why do I not own this yet? I don't know, but you need to. Need to. Love it. I need to borrow it. <laughs> so the hermit is a figure wearing a long pink cloak with some pink books on the ground, and they're writing with a feather, and they have a lantern, and they're actually writing under a tree on a little lap desk. Beautiful artwork. The lovers, Katie, is a bee <gasps> with a top hat. <laughs> we have to get this deck. And I'm going to just be more brief because we still each have about 16 tarot decks oh, piece to go through. So I'm going to shut up and move on to the next deck. That was the Tarot of Tales. Yes, I get wordy too. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll be short too. My next deck is Botanica, the tarot deck about the language of flowers. And this is by Kevin J. Stanton. It came, or comes out May 16th. This has its traditional 78 tarot card deck. It has beautiful illustrations. It's definitely traditional painting. It almost has like an Art Nouveau style, like simple Art Nouveau style, not like super painterly. Uh, basically what they do is we dive into the lore and symbolism of the plant kingdom. We have years of research into botany, mythology, and history. So it marries into the tradition of tarot which is great so now we get to learn about the natural vocabulary of life on earth i like that message i think it's great so it has a, a full 78 page it looks like oh it says a gilded paper box or paperboard box saddle stitched booklet explaining the symbolism and meanings behind botanica and six mailable tarot sized postcards cute this is botanica this is by kevin j stanton my next deck is the Clairvoyant Oracle. Make sure I'm, yes, in the right place. Uh, it is 36 cards, 112 page guidebook. Belinda Grace is the author. Tarn Ellis is the illustrator. This Oracle is gonna take you by the hand and show you how to develop your strengths, explore forgotten areas of your inner world. I might not be ready to explore those. I hid those for a reason. <laughs> But they encourage you to trust your own intuition, clairvoyance, and divine guidance. So Beautiful. let me take a peek at the cards. Oh, it's definitely fantasy uh, inspired, but the people don't have any facial features. It's a little bit creepy, but I get what they're doing. Kind of like those Waldorf dolls. You can see yourself in the cards if they haven't shown you the face. Mm -hmm. It is a diverse deck. I see all sorts of hair and skin colors represented. 
but because they don't have faces, I'm a little creeped out, <laughs> but their artwork is beautiful. I think it's not a deck for me, but for those of you that really want to see yourself in the cards, this would be perfect. It's the Clairvoyant Oracle, and it comes out April 17th today. Oh, nice. All <laughs> right. My next deck is the Clarity Tarot. Uh, so this one came out April 11th. This is by Belle Sn Snell. It is a very, very minimalist style um, art. So it's mostly black, every single card and the booklet itself with white, almost like a, what do you call it? Like an X, an X, a, S, a sketch. I can't, well, I can't say it right now. It's etching? like etching. Thank you. Thank you. My brain. It's Monday and we haven't had enough oh. caffeine yet. No kidding. So it's like etching white around certain cards, but it's very, very simple. So we have the full card, which is some guy just, spread out with lines all around just outlining him we have um a mountain for the hermit with yeah it's just it's uh just a simple mountain and the tarot reader is one of the cards in here a woman spread out with some cards and a moon a crescent moon below her it's really beautiful but very simple it's a more contemporary style of the traditional 78 card tarot and um it's stripped of monarchal monarchal i can't say this right again uh hierarchy by binarism and ageism of the characters the cards allow people from different backgrounds and different levels of knowledge of tarot to easily self-reflect on them the borderless design allows you to create visual landscapes and to more deeply understand the elements of tarot and correspond correspondences to them it's very cool lots of cool symmetry and really interesting art style this is the clarity tarot by del sinel i almost needed to get a dictionary to understand that description <gasps> though it might be a little pretentious i it's, don't know i know it's yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that that ain't me. That is nope. the publisher notes. I yep, wish yep. I was that pretentious sometimes. No, no, <gasps> we will never be. Oh, goodness gracious. Next Ooh. up, I am beyond delighted to introduce the Dia de los Muertos <gasps> Oracle. Now there's a Dia de los Muertos tarot already, but this is the Oracle and there are marigolds everywhere and orange and mostly orange. This is gorgeous. So what can we learn about this? It's by Kelly Sullivan Walden is the author and also Emily K. Greaves de Reyes. So on the day of the dead, as we know, the veils between the worlds thin and the departed return and a celebration of life. And this Oracle deck is definitely celebratory. I see people smiling and dancing and walking together. It's rich and festive tradition, 216 page guidebook, 44 card or Oracle. I'm very excited to own this and start using it. You don't just need to use it on Halloween. Yes. Yay. Yes. <laughs> All right. My next deck of cards is Disorder, Tarot of Innocence. This came out April 8th. This is by Diego Gabriel. I it see boobies. There's a lot of breasts and nudity in this deck in particular, but I I really like this art style. It's really interesting. Very it's different. It is. Um, so it is black. Everything is black and white. Very, very simple. It's our traditional uh, 78 card Rider Waite um, interpretation, but it's more fresh interpretation. So it's a deceptively simple art style, but it's highly expressive. Like each figure on there is very... Um, you, it just gives you more curiosity. Each archetypal figure leads you closer to the answers you seek. And it again, very simple. The images on Amazon uh, present everybody with a different thing. And it just has it's an accessory that they're holding. Yeah, it's not hmm. super complicated and it has different kinds of people on there. I really enjoy it. So this is Disorder, Tarot of Innocence. My next one is Grimalkin's Curious Cat's Tarot oh, by M.G. Cullinan, who I think is also an author of books. Oh, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. So it is an 80 card deck and guidebook from the creator of the Crow Tarot. That's where I've heard that name oh, before. Okay. Okay. So there's everything from scrounging alley cats to well-fed fat cats. There's hairless <laughs> cats to giant puffballs. 
It's a positively perfect <laughs> deck. I didn't write that. The publisher did <laughs> for any cat lover. And it's a Rider Waite Smith style cards. And cats are depicted along their own fool's journey. The good, oh. the bad, the graceful, and the goofy. This is adorable. I like the artwork style. It's Grimalkin's Curious Cats Tarot. Came out on April 4. I really like the card here with the cat looking at the cheetah moon. <laughs> Longingly. Some uh, of these look photorealistic, honestly. Yeah, they might do a bit of a mixed media thing. <laughs> All right. My next deck is the Herbal Tea Magic for the Modern <sighs> Witch Oracle deck. Yes. birthday my yep. birthday just happened but we could do another birthday oh. Oh. it is a 40 card deck and guidebook for creating tea readings herbal spells and magical rituals so this came out april 18th this is by elsie wild and chincal parik is the illustrator this is for our green witches out there it has 40 illustrated cards and they all are herbs florals and more like actual cups of tea so each card very very simple beautiful illustration of like a hibiscus violet a tulsi and you just see a tiny little flower there not tiny but you just see the flower there nothing too crazy and everything like the background looks tea stained which i appreciate a lot so the cards have that tea stained everything. So also at the on the bottom of the card, we have, you know, our flower or plant, which I'll give the hibiscus as an example. On the very, very bottom, we have passion, lust, freedom. So different representations of the card or meanings of the card. So this is really fun. You can learn all of the metaphysical meanings to all kinds of herbs, plants, etc. So this is the Herbal Tea Magic for the Modern Witch Oracle. It's a 40 card deck with a beautiful guidebook that's 192 pages. It is really fun. This is by Elsie Wild and Chincal Parikh. My next deck looks like something Katie needs to own. How to be a moonflower. Do I have you it. own this? <gasps> How do you already have it? It just came out on April 4. Good job. Yeah, I have it. 78 Ways to Let the Night Inspire You by Katie Daisy. You're embracing the magic of nature after dark. I'm going to put you front and center so we can see this. Some of these are upside down. Whoops. This one's oh, interesting. Oh, the cards are lighter than I would have thought with the quotes on the front. Yeah, the, so. The back darker. It's very botanical. It is. And we have here are <gasps> some of the dark, but everything's oh. different. So I love that. The snake. Very cool. I almost um, screamed, but it was a pink snake, so I didn't get that frightened. <laughs> yes. Uh, this one's bats. So, yeah, this one's really interesting. And here's the other side again. We have the live in awe. Oh, this one's kind of hard to see. Play flashlight tag. So this if you pull the card, it's telling you the message you need to hear. Live in awe. Yeah, so this is our how to use. This is our quote guidebook. It doesn't need very much. It says, um, let's see, I've created a tool to help you embrace the beauty and wonder of the night and to explore all the mystery it has to offer. 78 cards that have the power to inspire, enchant, and awaken a new world within you. And it can help you overcome your fear of the dark and the night. It can help orient you to and acquaint you with the darker hours and what lies therein. And most of all, it can help you find a certain magic in the unknown. So there's extra stuff. It's very simple to use. You shuffle, etc. It's cute. It is very cute. I like it. So yes. Sorry. <laughs> Love yeah. it. All right. My next deck <laughs> is the Human Spirit Oracle. Oh. Learning to reconnect. There's it's very... It, is it very like Salvador Dali esque? Is it very Ooh. like surreal or? Oh, it is really surreal. Ooh. It does have like that mixed media thing going on. Like all the people featured on every single card look very realistic, but around or on top of there's like magical overlays that are really enchanting. And another interesting thing, instead of on the bottom of the card having, you know, the sign symbol or representation for each card, it's actually on the side. It looks like a little bit of like a book, like a page turn or something. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so there's 44 gilded cards. There's an 128 full color guidebook, 
Thank you, Rockpool Publishing. Uh, this comes out or came out April 17th. So today it's by Jenna Della Grotaglia. And I know I said that incorrectly. I am very sorry, Jenna. So here is what this whole deck is about. It is a tool for self-transformation. It is meant to delve into our collective consciousness. This Oracle deck provides a message of hope, unity, and har harmony, and is intended to reflect and inspire everyone in this journey called life. It's cute. I like it. It's very elegant. It is the human spirit Oracle learning to reconnect. It has 44 gilded cards. It's by Jenna, Jenna uh, Della Grotiglia. What is next for you, Carrie? Hopefully an easy to pronounce name. <laughs> It is the Inner Eye Oracle. It is black and white with some red accents. It's a 52-card playing deck for the modern age, modern age by Stephen Bright. So this is not necessarily a tarot deck, but much has been written about reading using just playing cards. Many systems for doing this have been shared, but the methods aren't usually easy to learn or remember. Well, these are fully illustrated cards that show recognizable symbols with keywords that allow the diviner to read them right out of the box. Love it. The cards are designed to provide the reader with a comprehensive oracle system. The illustrations have an antique and mystical feel to them, but we haven't been able to see inside because there's no preview on Amazon or Edelweiss. So we are going to move on. That's all I know about this one, but I love the concept of using a regular playing card deck and yeah for readings but if that was that great of a system the tarot cards wouldn't have come into existence hundreds of years ago so there's that yeah yeah all right my next uh deck is called the luminous humanness oracle uh card it is uh came out april 8th this is by kelly sullivan walden and layla savolainen i'm not sure why i'm getting these names <laughs> This is by Llewellyn Publications. So how I could describe the illustrations, it's very dreamy. Like, mm. I feel like I'm in a dream looking at every single card. Very it's, ethereal. Yes, very ethereal. Just very stunning. Lots of uh, people are the focal point in this, in this deck for sure. And all the cards have different color palettes as well, but they're almost pastel-like. So... To be luminous is to be at ease with your inner gold. In feeling and freeing your authentic, connected, and whole self, your light illuminates your path and possibilities so you can move forward in confidence and clarity, excited for all that awaits you. There are 44 oracle cards and a companion guide that is about 116 pages, elevating perspective and turning everyday tedium into treasured moments and glowing experiences. I like that. I think that would be great for everybody. So this is Luminous Humanist uh, Oracle by Kelly Sullivan and Layla Savolainen. That is truly stunning. Yeah. My next deck is Practical Magic, an oracle for everyday enchantment. It's not related to the Alice Hoffman book or film. Oh. It's by Serene Connealy. And it is a fantasy deck with beautiful women, most of them Caucasian from what I can see, but a couple diverse ones. Beautiful gowns, very witchy, lots of woodland creatures. This is a very witchy deck. I'm excited. Let's see what the publisher says about it. It is by Llewellyn, of course. Energize the purpose, knowledge, and potential within you to empower your heart and transform your tomorrows. It is a 36-card deck with art by Selena Fennick. And there's symbolism, insight, ritual, and divination. There is a guidebook. It's a comprehensive magical resource. We want to shape our reality and set nurturing boundaries with support of deities, herbs, crystals, and colors. That is really cool. And I think I'm going to pick that one up. That's Practical Magic and Oracle for Everyday Enchantment. Beautiful. That is beautiful. My next one is called the Runic Tarot Deck. Uh, this comes out April 8th, and it's by Jack Sephiroth, Zhang Chow, and Jamie Alford. Lots of people have contributed to this one. The images are very, I mean, if you're into Norse mythology at all, this is way up your alley. It's very, very stunning. We have, um, it almost looks like the um, maiden crone and mother on one of the cards. We have uh, not Odin, I thought it was for a second, with rainbows in some of these places. Lots of folklore looking i'm folklore sorry uh folk looking 
uh, magic elements in here. So this can be used with your runes as well. If you do any rune readings, it's supposed to boost your intuitive abilities and provide ancient Norse insights to all your burning questions. So if you're affiliated with any Norse you know, deity, or if you really had just love Norse mythology at all, I highly recommend it. It's one of the first most beautiful Norse oriented tarot card decks I've seen. So this is the runic tarot. This is by Jack Sephiroth, Zhang Chow, and Jamie Elford. My next deck is Shadow and Light Oracle, Reflection Cards to Unlock Your Unconscious Mind. Ooh. 36 cards, 96 page guidebook, and the author's name is perfect for this, Selena Moon. The publisher is Rockpool Publishing. They always do high quality paper and ink, which I love. This deck will assist people in everyday life by shining a light on a multitude of matters and encouraging an openness to different perspectives. That's always good. And yes. self-reflection, opportunities, and paths in life. It's highly focused on self-empowerment, self-improvement, self-growth, and overcoming obstacles. And the artwork is very fantasy-oriented, gorgeous. Yeah. A little bit of photo, like digital art, photorealism-ish. Yeah. I may pass this one, pass on this one because uh, it's too self-helpy. And I want to stay the way I am. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I need to change and improve too. But this isn't particularly calling to me, but it is gorgeous. Yeah. What's next for you? Mine is actually painted cards. This is the Solitary Witch Oracle, Lore, Wisdom, and Light for Your Magical Path. Uh, this is by Lucy Cavendish and Lady Victoria. It is stunning. A little darker, I would say, like very dark tones throughout um, of all of the cards. We have... Her Herb Garden, Garden is one of the cards I can see. I can't see the titles of the other two that are featured on the Amazon page. But again, beautiful images. There's a 180-page compendium that comes with the book, 45 cards. It is ethereal. Uh, it helps you enhance every reading with expert advice by Lucy Cavendish. And this oracle shows you there's much to gain on a solitary path. And it will be your constant companion in improving your own craft. I feel like I, I guess I associate with this a lot more. I'm not really a groupie, which I like having my own practice and being more solitary myself. And I know a lot of people like that. So this is a really cool Oracle deck to have with you. If you are also like that, this is the solitary, witch Oracle, what is next? And, oh, and go that's for it. perfect for people that live in a small town, even if you wanted to join a Wiccan group or a coven, etc. it might not be there for you. So by default, you have to be a solitary witch. And this is a gorgeous deck. It is. Yeah. My next deck is very un unlike anything we've talked about today. It is the Trickster's Journey, a tarot deck and guidebook. And it's based on Chinese mythology and the canonic 16th century Chinese, Chinese novel called Journey to the West. The artwork style reminds me of the time period between Art Nouveau and Arts and Crafts Movement and Art Deco, when it was kind of fashion illustrations with simple, like maybe six colors. Anyway, it is really interesting. They renamed the full card to Trickster, a character based on the legendary Monkey King in Journey to the West. And the archetype of the, archetype of the sojourner takes on new meaning and new agency as a seeker of truth and self-discovery. This is created by fine artist Jia Sung, and it's a fresh take on the classic figures in the major and minor arcana, moving, uh, bringing in Buddhism and ancient Chinese history. Love it, love it. 78 cards, shrink-wrapped in a travel case, and a 184-page full-color book. That's Trickster's Journey. My next one is very unique, and it's temporarily out of stock so i'm assuming people have been all over it it is tarot goblinco <laughs> dark fantasy medieval punk tarot wow it, that's a lot all yes, in one deck it is amazing so it's an oversized full color hardbound coffee table book i guess with the also with the deck as well i think or the I, deck is just featured on here i feel like it's uh kickstartered because the publisher is Goblinko. Oh, no. But, but that's okay. 
It is. It is really, really fun. Uh, the images are wild, as you could probably imagine. We have a uh, different... No, the suits are all the same. The Hanged Man features, like, some guy, a sun guy in jeans, <laughs> full jeans, except his ripped up knees, and he's <laughs> upside down over, like, a... I don't know, a sunny river or something like It's hard to describe because this art style is very, very different. Now it has, go click and look. it is very, very, very different. It goes into detail about each suit. I think this is, I think this is just a book. So we might have stuck something in here, maybe, or you could maybe flip through and pretend like it's a tarot deck. Just flip a book and point, and there you go. That's where you, you know, need to I be. I like that new way of doing things. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's simpler. You don't have to clean up everything. It's just a book. This is 80 pages. It definitely has, like, an underground comic vibe, old fantasy art style. It's very almost psychedelic. Uh, it's definitely punk rock. This is Tarot Gablinko, Dark Fantasy Medieval Punk Tarot by Sean Aberg. I thought I had the most unusual deck with the uh, squid cake, but I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of cool ones this year. I have four more tarot decks to talk with you about beginning with The Witch's Apothecary, How to Make Magical Potions for the Will of the Year. It's a great tarot deck for hedge witches and green witches. It is by Lorianne Anderson. Rituals and recipes to help you embrace daily magic and sacred living through apothecary blending with herbs, oils, fragrances, and crystals. A sacred living lifestyle is like slow living, and it's spiritually infused and focused on mindfulness, magic, and self-care. You can learn to craft magical blends that carefully follow the wheel of the year. This is a deck, not a book, but it does have a booklet along with it. And I can, oh, um, I, hmm, I can't see any of the cards, but I can peek inside of the book. Mm. So it actually, it is an, oh, it's a guide. Excuse me. It's not an actual deck. It is a guidebook. All right, so FYI, I needed to do my research a little better when I added this, but I got very excited and I thought it was an Oracle deck because it's so cool. So let's move on. <laughs> okay, no, it's fine. We've got the fantasy, or the fantasy. Hey, we're we're running at the end of this podcast episode, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Citadel, a fantasy Oracle. It is a modern tarot library. This comes out June 6th. This is by Fez Inkwright and that name is really, I I can't, I don't know who that is, but I it's ringing a bell. This is stunning and I really want it. Uh, Me it too. Looks, it's so cool. It's so unusual. It is. Um, so it's a fresh take on Oracle decks that is seeped in the magic of fantasy literature. Like, you know, we have Tolkien is an, you know, example of that and tabletop gaming. So you can actually use this deck for storytelling or even making like your own role-playing tabletop game, it looks like. So it says each of the 60 cards in this deck represents a person living within the Citadel. The guidebook describes different scenes that the reader will encounter while traveling through the city, including the stories of each character and the interpretation of each card. Oh, this looks so cool. So like, for instance, we have the Hound. And the hound means loyalty, chains, promises. We have the astronomer, which means discovery, spy master, mm. knowledge, distrust. Uh, the painter's productivity and creation. Lots you could almost people. tell a story if you just drew five cards and lined them up and started talking, too. Oh, my God. Yes. Mm. And another thing that is cool about these cards, too, is that they are octagonal shaped so they're not like it's like you cut the ends of the card off so then you have like a weirdly oh wow you know gem like card it's very cool it's a fun deck so this is the citadel it's a fantasy oracle it's by fez ink i definitely have to pre-order that yeah. right this second you're yeah. gonna hear some clicking yeah i get that <laughs> my next deck is the alistair crowley tarot 78 Ooh. cards 128 page book and, of course, Crowley has dark magic, and it's based on the, the occult symbolism, Egyptian numerolo numerological, excuse me, astrological, and they actually say it's a life-affirming philosophy. It's not all death and Satan, etc. That will, 
that will kind of disappoint some people. Yeah. <laughs> it is by Tania or Tanya Austin. And of course, Alistair Crowley. And the illustrator is Paula Zorite or Zorite. And it is way more colorful than I would have expected and yeah. bright and cheerful. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the Two of Wands has keywords, personal power, boldness, and originality. Ace of Wands, the keywords are creative force, confidence, and courage. This definitely sounds like Crowley. And the artwork is beautiful, colorful, light and bright, but not like foofy, you know, perky goth. It's, I like it actually. This isn't normally my thing, but I'm very curious. And look at the art card if you get a chance. It's someone stirring flames into a cauldron, but they're wearing a rainbow and there's a lion and a bird. I Wow, this is going to be worth exploring. I really hope the guidebook is helpful because I don't really have a reference for this. It's a 128-page illustrated book. Wow. So the publisher is Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S. Not like, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> and is the Alistair Crowley tarot book, and it comes out May 16. Oh, tarot book and card deck. Sorry. No, you're good. My next one is a pocket tarot deck. It is the Crow Tarot, which I we've we've had the Crow Tarot out. It's a very, very popular deck, actually. Now you can have a little pocket edition. This is by MG Kuli Kulinan, which we've already talked about. And it looks Oh, and they've done also the Urban Crow Tarot. I didn't know that, too. Oh, so these have all of our familiar Crow Tarot deck images. They're just pocket sized 78 card deck. We have the same symbolism as the Rider Waite Tarot, and it's great for beginners and professional readers. And there's a 128 page guidebook for a pocket tarot. I'm impressed. These are great images, all featuring crows, very beautifully painted. I really enjoy it. This is the pocket sized Crow Tarot. I'm excited. I apparently get to read about all the mushroom decks today because <laughs> here is the Mushroom Spirit Oracle. Cute. 36 gilded cards, 112-page full-color guidebook by Nic- Nicola McIntosh. Or Nicola McIntosh. It is pastel and pretty and a little bit whimsical. I love the font. It's all curly. It looks very early 1970s, but of course made modern. <laughs> Again, just like the other deck, there's types of mushrooms. This, I think it says wrinkled peach mushroom. This oh. looks a little phallic. I'm giggling. A parrot wax cap. Uh, th- there's a mycelium spread or an obstacle spread. You can do a five card or four card spread. They've thought of everything. That's cute. There's a card called the amethyst deceiver, and it represents oh. deception. So 36 hand-drawn images of mushrooms from all over the world, and each mushroom has a message for you. This is pretty cool. It's the Mushroom Spirit Oracle. Comes out May 1st. All right. We have I have two more decks. So my next one is Tarot of the Witch's Garden. This comes out May 8th. Sasha Graham and Natasha Ilincic is uh, contributing to this. Manifestation and magic await you in the witch's garden. Perfect for spring and summertime and, you know what, fall too. So this has beautiful um, images here with lots of sublime summer landscapes. It is also Rider Waite Smith style deck. It is watercolor paintings. There are 78 cards. They are I mean, if you're into cottage core, this is definitely up your alley. Honestly, Carrie, I can see you uh, with this deck. I need it. I see a lot of cloaks and flowing gowns and long locks of hair. And I only see Caucasians. So this is not very diverse. (laughs) No, I take it back. There's a little beautiful girl with dark skin and hair. Okay, I take it back. Yes. So it's uh, it has a full color companion book, 312 pages. Very, very elaborate. So this is the Tarot of the Witch's Garden. It's it's very stunning and pretty straightforward by Llewellyn Publications. And my final, uh, oops, is the Witch of the Forest Tarot Magic deck. It has some Egypt, Egyptian mythology on the front. Wow. Oh, it, is a 78 card deck and guidebook by Lindsay Squire. The illustrator is Vicki Lester. And let me see. Uh, it doesn't say much about it. It says that it's sparkling, vibrant tarot deck with beautiful gold finishes, stylish design based off of classic writer weight. 
I'm going to peek at the inside and see what I can see. It's mostly purple, gold, and red accents with a little bit of teal. There's not a lot of people, but I see creatures. The lover's card is a angel with snakes and Adam and Eve. Very unusual. I like the art style. I wish I was better at describing it. I see a lot of golden suns, crescent moons, etc., and some botanical on the side. It is beautiful. It comes out June 27, the Witch of the Forest Tarot Magic deck. And I made a mistake. I thought I had two left, but it was me looking at another deck on You're accident. Done. So I'm done too. <laughs> So that finishes up all of the, well, not all of them. This is just part one. So there's a ton more uh, tarot card decks coming out in the later part of the year. I know we're in spring. So stay tuned for other episodes, though, and live streams of dark reads, gothic, horror, suspense, thrill, etc. And that includes nonfiction, adult fiction, children's, YA, etc. And we like to like or we like to publish every Wednesday and Friday, but we might do more, a couple more because we have a tarot dark decks coming out as well. Uh make sure to stay tuned on our Instagram, YouTube, and our Facebook channel as well for more dark reads that we find like at our library or just we just stumble upon it we find a lot of cool stuff there so make sure to give us a follow thank you so much for listening to this very long uh, live stream slash podcast episode we will see you next time